Hey everyone, John here, All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're going to be talking about Nordic Forces for our World War III Team Yankee from Battlefront Games. This uh, expansion or supplement uh, brings the Finnish, Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish forces into Team Yankee. And I know there's some uh, excitement about this and people are looking forward to it. Uh, Battlefront was nice enough to send me a PDF copy of the uh, book a little early so I could uh, look through it. And uh, so today um, I'm gonna use kind of more like a podcast format to chat about uh, the book and uh, what's in it and some of my thoughts about it. All right, let's talk about the uh, the, the book, the contents, and uh, the history. So obviously the World War III is raging. The Soviets have decided to push through um, the, you know, the northern countries through Finland and Sweden um, and onto Norway to secure ports and airfields to support their, their campaigns in northern Europe. So that's kind of the... Um, you know the, the gist of the history and there's there's more detailed stuff and maps in the books which is pretty cool um, but that said really we're here for some new and, and interesting things now I do like these these kind of um, intelligence briefings because they are so unlike a NATO or sorry unlike the United States or or you know Britain or Germany or even the Soviet Union, there's not like super state-of-the-art things in here. You're not going to find an M1A1 uh, HC, for example, or the equivalent of a T80. So, you know, these uh, countries didn't have particularly huge uh, forces, and the things that they did have um, weren't necessarily the best that was available at the time. So if you're a player that's looking for wanting to play with just the, the most powerful units, Nordic Forces probably isn't going to be your cup of, uh, cup of tea. But if you're looking to play more, um, you know, more interesting, more diverse forces, Nordic, uh, the Nordic Forces book might be something you want to check out. Okay. So let's talk about the, the contents of the book. The book is like 112 pages, I think, long. Um, I'm going through the, the contents here. Uh, and again, it has Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, and Finnish. We're going to talk about the Finns first and um, you know what they have in the book. So the Finns are interesting uh, because they have, let me, let me get there. I'm not going to try to pronounce uh, this in uh, Finnish, but we have the Finnish forces here. Basically, there are five different formations. There's a T-72 FM-1 uh, armored company, a T-72 FM-2 armored company, T-55Ms, then you have a BMP-1 company, and a BTR-60 company, so kind of mobile infantry. In support, you've got... Um, some standard, more Soviet things. You've got carnations, things like that, uh, uh, hail, rocket launcher battery. Uh, but you also have like the the combo T-55 marksman anti-aircraft platoon. So it's a T-55 with that marksman turret that you see like the, the British use and the, the uh, West Germans, I believe, use that. Um, you can also be supported by the uh, Swedish with their Viggen uh, airplanes, which are very cool. We'll talk more about those later. Um, and you can also have an allied formation. You can use one NATO formation as an allied formation, um, which is, is nice. So you can really be supported by, by anything. The um, T-72 FM-2 is the best tank that uh, Finland can field. And that's coming in with uh, front armor 17, side armor 8. Uh, it has ERA, so it's got the cool, uh, you know, blocks on it, uh, as well as thermal imaging. It's got the standard anti-tank gun that we're used to. It's AT-22, and uh, I think it's just a single shot. Yep, it's just a single shot, and it's a 2 plus firepower 40-inch range. So it's, you know, it's the Soviet one, but it is hit on um four so it's it's 
basically a veteran tank. The uh, courage and skill rating of the, the finish is uh, awesome, fantastic. They have a skill of 2+, plus, and they have a courage of 2+. Plus. What does this mean? Well, that means a skill 2+, plus means you're going to be uh, performing your blitzes without any problem for the most part. Courage of 2+, plus means you're not going to be running away uh, anytime soon. Now, I normally play a lot of uh, Americans with uh, 4+, plus, and uh, uh, my forces just, just tend to melt away, which is kind of what you expect with a, a courage of four plus. But these guys have a courage of two plus, very nice. And uh, you know, their, their companies are, are interesting. But the FM, uh, the FM2 again is the, the best one with the front armor 17. The FM1, the T72 FM1, is a front armor 15 T72, so it's more like a, the, the standard T72 we started with in, in the game. Uh, overall, though, the um, you know the, the fins are pretty straightforward. They're the, the the faction that's using Soviet equipment the most. So if you're you're wanting to play a more Soviet equipped uh, Western force, the the fins are that way. So you know you get to paint your T. 72s in kind of a, a NATO camo scheme or a three color camo scheme, uh, which can be nice after, if you're like me, you've painted a lot of uh, Soviet T-72s, T-64s, all in that Soviet brown green, which can be, uh, you know, be its own thing. Just a quick uh, comment about uh, Finnish infantry. Um, sometimes you live or die on the quality of your infantry. Um, their their uh, BMP-1 platoon is typically fielded in either six teams or four teams with either three or, or two BMP-1s. You can upgrade one of them to a, um, I, I'm probably going to butcher this, but a PILAS, A-P-I-L-A-S, anti-tank team for one point. Now that's a, a pretty decent, it's short ranged, uh, but it has anti-tank 21. Uh, three up heat. Otherwise, the infantry is equipped with uh, basically a a, uh, a version of the law, which is a, a AT-12 um, heat weapon. So, you know, the, the infantry isn't jam-packed with anti-tank weapons. You're not going to be uh, necessarily stopping uh, a dedicated armored assault with these guys, which is a shame, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of is what it is. The, um, the, let's see, the, they have a BTR-60 company is kind of the same uh, layout, but you can uh, get more of those Apalas uh, teams into the platoon. I think you can get two of them, uh, which again is shorter range, uh, only 16 inch range. So it's not a, a, a very offensive weapon, but defensively, a couple of shots at AT-21 uh, will threaten pretty much any any tank in the game, which is nice. All right, so that is um, a look at the um, you know the fins and what they've got. Uh, overall, again, if you're looking to play basically a, a Western or NATOized version of Soviet equipment, uh, the fins might be what you're looking for. Again, you can take. Uh, a lot of things here and they're going to have great uh, soft stats almost all of them are if not all of them are are hit on fours they're going to have great uh, courage and morale um, i think the worst is like a three plus um, but their armor is at a, a two plus uh, obviously it's going to be more expensive than uh, the soviet equipment but you're paying for um, you know, hit on four plus, which again is, is kind of like its own uh, armor, if you will. All right, so that's the fins. Next up, we have Sweden. Uh, so uh, Sweden is um, basically it's officially neutral in the game, and much like it is currently in real life, although apparently not for long. Uh, but they are pretty closely affili affiliated to. Uh, NATO, especially after the and Team Yankee history, the Soviets attack, and uh, they are on the defense. So now they are also fighting the Soviets. 
All right, so what do they get? Well, they have three different companies. They have uh, basically a S-Tank company. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a sec. A Centurion company, and then a Armored Rifle company. So the S-Tank is pretty cool. Let's talk about that because this is one of the, the new models that is actually coming out with this release. Um, I believe it's going to be a plastic model. I think it's in the starter box for, uh, you know, for Sweden. I think this, and, and I think that's going to be an S tank starter box. The S tank is an, an interesting tank. It's basically a main battle tank that uses a, a turbine engine, kind of like the M1 does, uh, but it doesn't have a turret. So instead, it has a gun, like an assault gun. Uh, but the you know they used this in uh, with tank doctrine so they they basically treated it like a tank what uh, stats does it have well it's hit on a four so it's it's veteran it only has front armor 12 side armor 5 it's not uh, super heavily armored at all um, skill of three plus four plus four a courage so um, you know these guys aren't as uh, as fanatical as the finish, I guess. Uh, it does have a 105 millimeter gun, which gives it a uh, anti-tank 21, two plus firepower, two shots halted, one shot on the move. It does have kind of what you'd expect for a 105 millimeter gun in this game. It has brutal forward firing because it's a, a hull mounted gun, laser range finder. It is overworked though. Um, so if you do move and you don't blitz successfully, uh, if you move and shoot, it's going to be one shot and it's going to be one harder to hit. Uh, so it's not the best uh, mobility as, as far as mobility, offensive mobility goes. But here's the thing. It's a cool looking tank. And if you are a, uh, a player of Team Yankee who wants to try something new, something cool looking, you know, you can make this work. Anti-Tank 21 isn't impossible to deal with. Um, overworked is not impossible to deal with, especially if you're shooting at Soviets, which basically they're usually hit on threes. You're going to make them hit on fours. Basically, you're giving them free veterancy when you do that. But, you know, that's where Blitz comes in. You can Blitz on a three plus. Um, and, um, yeah, so it's a cool tank. It's a cool looking tank. And... I hope to maybe collect that. I, would, I would, would like to get that, but I don't know yet. All right, the other uh, formation is a Centurion tank formation. So Centurion is a, you know, a British tank. It's a very cool looking tank. I love the way the Centurion looks. Just on tank looks alone makes me want to collect Centurions. Um, I bet this kit will have some application for um, you know the six day war or the um what is that the fate of a nation actually uh expansion but i don't know but i think this is going to be a plastic kit and as far as a tank goes by this time period it's it's pretty much a second rate tank and, and by that i mean it's got a um let's see it's got a front armor 14 uh, side armor 6, top armor 2. So front armor 14 means that uh, um, T-72s, you know, anything that's firing that, that Soviet uh, gun with anti-tank 22 is just going to punch right through this uh, without a, a save. You won't be able to save it. Uh, but front armor 6, side armor, sorry, front armor 14, side armor 6, top armor 2. It has a 105 millimeter gun, um, but it's not quite as good as the one in the S-tank. It is only anti-tank 19, uh, still two plus firepower, halted uh, two shots, moving one shot. It does not have overworked, so there's no penalty to move and shoot besides the fact that you're losing a shot, uh, which is, is kind of uh, uh, sad. But uh, that's a thing that's kind of British tanks. Most British tanks are like that too. So, you know, it's, it's not anything shocking, but it's a very cool... Um, it's a very cool looking tank. So again, uh, style points for these guys. Then you have the Armored Rifle Company. Now these guys are riding in PBV 302s, I believe, 
which basically they're kind of they're kind of like a version of the M113. They kind of look like that. Um, they're they're pretty similar. You know, they're front armor three, top, side one. They have a uh, I think they have like a 20 millimeter cannon, but that that's it. Uh, and basically, it's just a, a troop carrying box. Nothing that's uh, uh, particularly new, but it does look different. If you're sick of painting M113s, this is a little bit different. Uh, their rifle platoon has uh, three uh, MG teams and three anti-tank teams. Uh, they have, let's take a look at their missiles. They do have a Bill missile team that is B-I-L-L, they can upgrade one of your anti-tank teams for that. That gives you a very nice 40-inch range anti-tank 22, 3 plus firepower. Uh, otherwise, they have um, anti-tank 17 for most of their um, anti-tank weapons in the infantry platoon, which offensively shooting at the front of most uh, Soviet tanks isn't going to do much, but can definitely... Um, even with heat, threaten the sides of, of some Soviet tanks. And um, yeah, that, that's pretty good, uh, it's not too bad. Um, they do have some other kind of unique uh, things for the Swedish army. I'm not gonna talk about everything they have in support, but they do have this IKV-91, which is a anti-tank platoon. It's basically a uh, like a assault gun. The gun's in a turret. Um, you know, only has front armor three, but it has a, a nine centimeter gun, which gives it anti-tank 17. Again, not really the best thing against enemy tanks, but can threaten the sides. Um, and uh, it's just a cool looking tank. I think it's based on their APC, which is the, um, what was that? The PBV 302. I think it's the same chassis, but it's this kind of cut down and with a, cool tank turret on it. It just looks cool. And uh, again, I typically play these games for the rule of cool. Swedish support, they also have kind of their um, their own cannon, uh, I'm sorry, cannon, their own artillery or howitzer battery, the Band Cannon 1. I kind of like that name. Uh, and I like kind of unique looking artillery, even though most artillery in this game you know, if it's heavy artillery, it kind of has the same stats. This has anti-tank four, two plus firepower uh, with the autoloader rule, which actually is, is pretty nice. I think that's reroll saves the first time you range in, if I remember right, could be wrong on that. But it's a cool looking piece of artillery and it's kind of unique to the Swedish. I don't know if they sold it to anyone, uh, but it's, it's, you know, very cool looking thing. Then um, the other thing that I'm excited about for the, the Swedish is the Viggen. Because the Viggen is a cool looking jet. Um, I don't know if any of you guys play video games. I play DCS World, which is a flight simulator. The Viggen is one of the modules you can get. And it's just a cool looking jet. It's not the best jet, it's not the most modern jet, but um, in game, it's uh, uh, pretty good. It can take a Maverick uh, missile, which gives you a 36 inch range anti-tank 27 uh, shot. So, you know, if you have a flight of four of these, that's gonna threaten anything. Even T-80s cannot uh, uh, withstand the Maverick missile. Uh, and then they also have a rocket launcher, so you can drop a salvo template somewhere or 30 millimeter uh, cannon, which can be uh, tear up, you know, light vehicles or um, even have a shot at shooting down helicopters. But the primary thing to remember about the Viggen is it looks cool. Um, it also is available in a lot of these forces. For example, I mentioned Finland can take it, Norway can take it as well. well all right, so that is our look at Sweden. Next up we have uh, the Norwegians. So this is actually gonna be the first force and the, the force I'm for sure gonna be collecting and playing with uh, a first here. And uh, this is Brigade Nord. You've got two different formations you can take. You can take a Leopard Squadron and you can take a Storm Squadron, which is basically like an armored rifle uh, company. 
So those are the two uh, formations you can take, which is pretty cool. And then they're supported by uh, various uh, things. It's primarily kind of a mix of West German and American equipment with some homegrown stuff. Um, these guys are also uh, able to be supported by um, the Marines, the U.S. Marines, and that the Marines are actually um, in the support column. So you can be supported by American M60s, um, Apaches and Cobras and, and whatnot. So that was kind of exciting. So anyway, um, has a Leopard 1 Squadron and an M113 Squadron. So the Leopards are a West German tank. They are, again, they're not, they're, they're not front line. They're a second tier tank at best. They're front armor nine, uh, side five, top one. These guys have a skill of uh, three plus, normally courage, uh, courage of four plus. Uh, they have a 105 millimeter gun, similar to the, if not identical to the one I think in the Centurion. It's a uh, well, maybe not identical, but it's a, a two-shot, uh, even halted and moving, anti-tank 19, two-plus firepower. Uh, so it's not uh, not too shabby. Now it's going to bounce off or um, have very low odds of hurting most Soviet tanks, unless they're bringing T-55s against you. Uh, but these these uh, leopards are cheap as chips. And, uh, you know, you can get quite a few of them. The nice thing is you can run them in platoons of four tanks, uh, which is pretty nice. Um, overall, though, it's a cheap, cheap tank. It's not very expensive. You can get uh, a hit on four version. Uh, the best bet is if you're going to run this, try to max out that uh, company with as many Leopard 1s as you can take. And then you should still have plenty of points for, you know, extra fun stuff on the side. Now the Storm Squadron is using the uh, the M113 or kind of a homegrown or modified uh, APC called an NM135, uh, and basically it was a, like a Norwegian upgrade to the M113 that gives it a small turret, I guess, on the top with like a, a cannon in it. So it's pretty good. So the um, the Storm Squad you can take them with either. Uh, four APCs or three. Um, the APCs, uh, sorry, the infantry in the, the larger platoon, you get four MG teams uh, and then three Carl Gustav anti-tank teams. If you're British players, you, you kind of know what you're getting. Uh, you can replace the Carl Gustav uh, with uh, IREX anti-tank missile teams, uh, which uh, is uh, pretty good. The IREX is a pretty... Uh, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, Anti-tank 24, 16 inch range. You know, anytime I see these anti-tank weapons at infantry haul around with a 16 inch range, I think they're more defensive, but when you can take um, three of them per platoon, you know, that, that's a lot of significant anti-tank that you can haul around. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's pretty solid, it's pretty inexpensive. The NM135 can take a two centimeter, or does have a two centimeter uh, gun on it, so it gives the platoon a little bit more firepower. The M113 itself, that classic American box APC, uh, only has a 7.62 machine gun on it. Uh, the options, or sorry, so the support options, they do have um, anti-tank, which uses a, a TOW-2. It's basically another version of the M113. If you're playing Norwegians, you better get used to painting the M113 chassis in one form or, or another. Their mortar platoon is, is in the uh, M113 as well. They do have uh, a Mercedes-Benz with a TOW, kind of like a Hummer version of the the, that the Americans have, uh, but the Norwegians use the West German Mercedes. Um, the air defense unit is kind of unique. It's an air defense M113 uh, with a basically a two shot uh, guided missile on it, uh, four plus firepower, so not too shabby. Uh, most lists you can take up to two of these, so that's like eight of these tanks for not too many points. 
Um, and again, I mentioned before, you could take American Marines. Uh, you can also take Swedish air support. So you can choose between Viggins or Harriers, uh, which is an interesting choice. You can't take both, which would be cool, but you can take either Viggins or Harriers. Um, I do like the Harriers. Um, I, I've had good luck with them, even though they're, they're again, cheap as chips. They're not the best plane, but when you can take four of them for like, I forget what it is, like six or seven points, um, it, it, sometimes it's better than the more expensive plane. The other thing with the Harrier is they, they come in on a three instead of a four, which for a lot of people, that's a big deal. Uh, but anyway, so again, this is what I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm going to start with the Leopard Company. I've got a, had a couple boxes of Leopards for my West Germans and uh, build from there. And then whatever points I need to make up for any game, I can just add some of my US Marine stuff. But for the most part, we're going for Norwegians. All right, so that's Norway for you. Next up, the Danes. Uh, the Danish have three formations they can take. Uh, leopard ones, like the Norwegians. The Centurions, like the Swedish. And the an M113 Armored Infantry Company. Um, so they do have some, uh, some cool choices. Uh, they do have, or I guess what makes them kind of unique is they can take uh, uh, tornadoes and as aircraft as a support or Harriers, so Marines or the West Germans can support them with aircraft. Um, they can take Leopard 2s. Uh, so I should say that they've, they've got more uh, West German allied support. So similar to how Norway can take US Marines, uh, the Danish can take West German support, which means you could take a couple of uh, harder to kill Leopard 2s, you could take a Martyr Panzer Grenadier uh, unit. Uh, you have access to the uh, helicopters for the West Germans. Uh, so yeah, not, not too shabby. Uh, the, as far as the formations go, um, the Leopards, they, you know, I'm, I'm not too sold on the formation here as opposed to the Nor Norwegian one because you can only take three leopards in a platoon as opposed to four if you're playing Norway. Um, they are skill four plus, courage four plus, so they're pretty average as far as soft scores go. Um, but otherwise it's a standard leopard one, which is nice. And then uh, Centurion you can take. Uh, and again, we talked already about the Centurion stats which is, uh, you know, another 1819 um, gun. And then uh, you have the Armored Infantry Company, which is basically uh, M113s, and you've got, very similar to the Norwegians, you've got three, basically, MG teams and three Carl Gustav teams with no option to upgrade them to the super good missile like the Norwegians had. Why would you take the Danes? Well, one, you might be Danish and just want to have a force for your own country represented, which I think is really cool. Um, the, the other thing is, it is a nice mix of, you've got uh, the Centurions and the Leopard Ones. This is the only list where you could take both of those. Plus, if you're a West, already a West German player, you can easily support, so you wouldn't have to buy as much Danish stuff if you want to support it <coughs> with some Leopard Twos. Uh, you know, that can get pretty pricey pretty quick because the Leopard 2 is a, a pretty good tank. Uh, you know, West German helicopters. So you can support it and uh, not necessarily break the bank collecting a Danish force. The Danes do have a different camo instead of like the three-tone NATO. They do have a, uh, it's basically a green and black, which looks pretty cool. They can take, again, the, the West German Tornado, which is a very cool swing wing aircraft. I don't think the Battlefront model can swing wing, but maybe it can. Um, and then it's got, again, the ubiquitous M113 uh, APC that uh, pretty much everyone has, which is cool. So there's your Danes. Uh, they look to be somewhat interesting, but as far as these uh, four form, or sorry, four nations go, it's probably towards the bottom. So I'll I'll rate them here in just a sec. Um, so 
interest wise I've already mentioned I'm going to be doing Norwegians first if you're looking for a unique force to play though I'd probably say that the Swedes Sweden that is um, going to have the most interesting non-traditional units in there because you have that S tank the STRV 103 uh, and Centurions um, you've got the you can take Viggins so you know the, there's a lot of cool stuff there that you you have as the the Swedish the Finns are interesting Finnish forces are interesting if you're interested in taking basically uh, good guy Soviet equipment so if you want you know NATO Soviet equipment uh, if you want it in kind of that three-tone NATO-esque scheme you want to paint these T-72s well that could be a, an interesting diversion so each one of these forces has something fun so as far as number one I would say Swedish would be what you want to look I think that kind of echoes how Battlefront's doing the starter box I think the Swedish force is the only one that's getting a starter box at least initially that's the only one I've, I've ever seen an advertisement for uh, the Norwegians I think bring some cool stuff particularly if you already have US Marines you can support them that way uh, and the Danish same thing except for uh, West German support instead of US Marine support uh, so you do have a lot of uh, cool variations here um, you will be painting a lot of M113 like vehicles a lot of boxes for most of these uh, most of these nations but that's just kind of the, the way it is no Bradleys over here um, and I think historically the Bradleys a little bit later in the, the timeline but don't uh, don't quote me on that I know the Team Yankee timeline has deviated from the uh, you know has deviated from history as far as when tanks were released and that's very true to uh, uh, you know how warfare happens and, and how manufacturing happens if there's a hot war technology uh, military technology is greatly increased and things that might not uh, have made it into production or um, were pushed back might be thrown into the battlefield very quickly that's my thoughts on the sergeant york uh, for the american forces which never really made it uh, it had some tech uh, technology problems but if there's a shooting war they're gonna throw in what they can when they can as soon as they can and uh, so i'm not too bothered by that boy that was a tangent but anyway uh nordic forces is going to be I, I think it's always going to be kind of a niche product because you've got um you got the main heavy swingers which are you know the americans the on the nato side the americans the west germans the british and then you've got uh of course the soviets and their warsaw pact nations on on the other side um so the, you know these guys they're again they don't have the best equipment but they do have some great stuff and some of these nations do have pretty good stats so i think you can build a competitive list with any of these and i think uh people can have a lot of um, a lot of fun with it so you know i'm going to build at least a norwegian force i know mark is building oh i forget what he's building but he's building a force i think sean is getting in on the action um, so you're going to be seeing some of these forces on the channel um, sooner rather than later which is uh, I'm, I'm excited for it so you know I love playing my Americans I, I have West Germans uh, I have lots of Soviets but uh, you know I don't have Norwegians and you know, I can honor uh, uh, my my son's heritage he's he's part Norwegian so there you go guys all right I hope you enjoyed this look overall I would say you know this is a cool book um, the nice thing about Battlefront products are these books these intelligence briefings or whatever they officially call them they're not that expensive so you know you can pick this up look through it and um, you know it's not going to break the bank like a you know a Warhammer codex uh, which costs 50 or 60 bucks now I don't know um, and it's pretty good so I'd say check it out if you have any kind of interest in um, the, the northern front in Europe um, and uh, 
yeah, I'd like to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know, are you excited for any one of these forces? Um, where are the competitive players out there? Let me know what they think uh, competitively, uh, who's got a leg up with this, uh, you know, with, with this book. Does anybody, or are the old standby still going to be the, the strongest? I'd be interested to know. All right, guys, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please do consider giving us a like and subscribe. If you like Team Yankee, do check out. Uh, we have battle reports uh, for Team Yankee here. If you like Flames of War, you can check out our Patreon. If you want to support what we do, you can uh, uh, become a member here on YouTube. And that just lets us know, hey, you know, we want more content like Team Yankee and the other games that we play. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, and keep on gaming.